St. Columba has always been seen as a place of refuge dating back to when the church was founded in 1898 with an Irish community under uh, Father White. We saw a change after the 1906 earthquake where the Italian community looking for a refuge uh, following the earthquake from San Francisco to Oakland, found a place here in St. Columba. And then it was within the next couple of decades that a lot of African Americans began to populate St. Columba. And a lot of that is because of the migration. Uh, my mother migrated in 1940. A lot of folks came to the shipyards. They worked uh, the railroads. And that's when they became more involved here in St. Columba. And since that time, we've had a number of various communities. When Monsignor O'Brien was here, he was the person in charge of the deaf, and so the deaf people worshipped here regularly. It was a major part of our community. Um, we always used to have um, the Portuguese were very involved here, too. I am a local parishioner of St. Columba Church. We grew up one and a half blocks away. My eight siblings and I were all students and graduates of St. Columba School. So all nine of us graduated from St. Columba School. One of the fondest memories that I have is our teachers were sisters of the presentation. They had a big station wagon. And they would come uh, and visit the families of the school in the evening. So many evenings, we had a, a living room full of nuns. And then my mom and the children would sit and we would just sit and visit. And then they would go to the next family. And my eighth grade teacher was Isabel Kellum. The uh, Isabel Kellum Scholarship is named after her. And she was an icon of St. Columbus School. She made sure that her students were high school ready. The fact that the scholarship is named after her. She was the eighth grade teacher of a number of my siblings, but she taught all nine of us. St. Columbus School is a great legacy of the families who started the school. For 93 years, it has given us a tremendous gift to educate our children. And 20 years ago, it morphed into a deanery school, St. Martin de Boris School, which closed last year. Much to the grief of everyone concerned, the diocese and ourselves as a parish continues to give in terms of Catholic education. The school building itself continues to give to us financially uh, in a way that sustains the parish and helps us flourish and celebrate who we are. When uh, Father Paul was our pastor, it was really further enhancement of African-American spirituality. And I believe that is very, very important that, that we have that here at St. Columba and that we maintain it as black and as being Catholic, because we come from a rich tradition that often is overlooked in other places. And here at St. Columba, it is a place where we celebrate our blackness, we celebrate our African spirituality, and I believe that we really are a beacon of hope for the Diocese of Oakland and for the Archdiocese of San Francisco. I know that's why a number of people come to St. Columba, is because of this African spirituality that we celebrate on a regular basis. A piece of land on the corner of 64th and San Pablo was donated to St. Columba Parish. At the time, Father Norkett was the pastor, and it was under the direction of Father Norkett, as well as some of our long-term parishioners, Juanita Cox, Gloria Wheeler, and Roger. We were able to bring that dream of senior housing to fruition for the residents of North Oakland, as well as some of the parishioners at St. Columba. Now we have an 85-unit senior housing. In addition to the Theo Bowman, we went on to develop a second property under St. Columba Development Corporation, and that is the Percy Abrams Senior Housing Unit. Back in 1970, I helped start the Gospel Choir here at St. Columba. We were the first gospel choir in the diocese, and the choir has existed ever since then. It has uh, evolved, and it really brings a sense of uh, belonging, a sense of ownership to our church. St. Columba is, is one of the most Baptist Catholic church I've ever attended. And to this day, uh, we've seen the underlying uh, thread that connects all of our communities, all backgrounds, has been the faith that we have. And this faith has always been used to to listen to and, more importantly, to act on issues regarding the city of Oakland and our world, whether it's addressing violent crime in our city, as evidenced by the crosses that we have out front, to address issues such as HIV and AIDS in our community, to the many ministries that we have in St. Columba. All of those are connected with our faith, and it is the faith that tells us who and whose we are. 
So what's distinctive about St. Columba for me is that it's really the people. It's when you do a history of the parish, you can do this pastor, this pastor, this pastor. The history of St. Columba has to be the history of the people because it's the people that make this parish. Pastors come and go, and when they come, they come and they learn how to be a pastor at St. Columba. We teach them. We're the parish. St. Columba, it's the people. St. Columba continues to be a dynamic place of worship and provides a voice for the voiceless to speak out against social injustice, to be a place of refuge and an oasis to those looking for a church home. It's through these examples and many more that St. Columba continues to come this far by faith. When I went to St. Bonaventure, as a seminarian, Father Mangini told me, you will fall in love with the people. And I remember distinctly thinking, how stupid is that? I mean, how can you fall in love with the whole congregation of people? I have fallen in love with St. Columba, the gift of the people here. This is where my heart truly lies. It gives me sheer delight to be here and to work here. I really love St. Columba. I love the the parish, I love the people, and I love what we do. And uh, it's, it's really hard, it's part of my own heart and soul at this point. It just gives me a great source of joy and a great source of love and response. Father Jason said when he was leaving that he believed the best part of St. Columba, the best years lie ahead. And I firmly believe that he was right. And after nine years, I believe, as we enter into this celebration of the 120 years, as we finish our strategic plan that will help us promote who we are, celebrate who we are, and sustain who we are, uh, I think that will help us, the gift we are to the diocese, the city of Oakland, and indeed the whole church, that we have the best years in front of us. And the future is good to be here for the next 120 years. Yeah.